Since different sources are good for different things, it's important to think about how you're going to use your sources. The BEAM model, created by Joseph Bizup at Columbia University, can be useful for thinking about how we use different sources for different purposes. BEAM stands for Background, Exhibit, Argument, and Method. According to Bizup, writers rely on background sources, interpret or analyze exhibits, engage arguments, and follow methods. While there's some overlap among the types of sources you use in each category, each category uses sources very differently. B stands for background. This is the big picture information that provides a working knowledge of your topic. You need to understand the big picture of your topic before you can focus in, or you won't really understand the context for what you're looking at. Background information can usually be found in encyclopedias and other reference works. Books that provide a survey of a topic can also provide a nice overview, though they will sometimes provide more information than you're looking for in background information. So for the Tea Party example, background information would include books and reference works that provide a basic overview of the Tea Party, a history of conservatism in America, or that provide an overview of the political climate of the past two decades. E stands for Exhibit. An exhibit is a direct source of information that has not been interpreted by another expert. An exhibit source is a primary source that you're going to use to provide a better understanding or analysis of some aspect of your topic. So that gets to the question of what is a primary source? A primary source is an item that was created during the period being studied and documents in some way what is being studied. That includes data, interviews, newspaper articles, speeches, memoirs, websites, blogs, works of literature, and much more. In the Tea Party example, exhibit sources might include data on the growth of the Tea Party, interviews with Tea Party members and leaders, Tea Party websites, and newspaper articles that covered the Tea Party movement as it was getting started. A stands for argument. This includes materials that contain arguments made by other scholars. You can find argumentative materials in books and articles. These are secondary sources where experts analyze and make arguments based on primary sources. Argument sources can back up your own argument, complicate your argument, offer a fuller picture of the issue, or suggest alternative answers. In the Tea Party example, argument sources would include scholarly articles and books written by experts that explore the birth of the Tea Party movement. If you're using argumentative sources, you're going to want to make sure that the author writing the article or book has the credentials or knowledge that make him or her an expert on the topic. A blog post by a college student on the ethics of cloning is probably not going to carry enough weight to back up your argument against cloning. Finally, M stands for method. These are sources that provide a framework for your argument or analysis. They may include works by major thinkers on your topic, works that provide a key definition for your topic, or works that provide a lens through which you're analyzing your topic. When I was in college, I wrote a paper where I used a Marxist analysis of emancipation to argue that slaves in the United States essentially freed themselves. So my method sources were the works of Karl Marx. In the case of tea, the Tea Party, perhaps they would be an article that provides a framework for understanding or analyzing the rise of political movements. Method sources can be primary or secondary sources, but they aren't used in the same way as exhibit or argument sources. They provide the lens through which you look at all your other evidence. No one source will meet all of your needs. Reference sources provide a broad overview that's good for background research, but with no analysis or depth. Primary sources can give you a first-person perspective or a view of popular sentiment about a topic, but they usually only provide a single or a few perspectives rather than the whole story. Peer-reviewed articles are written and vetted by experts, but they're usually narrowly focused because they're interpreting primary sources to make a particular argument. Theoretical works can ground your paper by tying it to an expert analysis but they may lack the specific data or details you need to make your case. Using a variety of sources together is the key to having a well-balanced paper with bulletproof evidence. Starting your search from a place where you know what you're looking for will make finding what you need a whole lot easier. But remember to always look at your assignment to see if your professor requires specific types of sources to be used in your research. 
And if you get stuck, ask a librarian. We're happy to help.